Jared Polin, Fro Knows Photo. Dot com. Here we go again with another raw file edit from a submitted raw file that one of you guys sent in. And in this case, it is Alan French. Alan, thank you for sending this photo in. The reason I chose this one this week is it seems like an, a hard picture to one take because very low light situation inside of an operating room. Not sure what kind of why that did. Anyway, I was exporting files, but not sure why it's so dark it's probably something like eye surgery alan let me know what kind of surgery this is and i'll put the information in there but it's i picked this because it's not the easiest of photos to edit uh, there's some something here that can be done and we're going to find out what it is when when i sit here and try to edit this right now but let's look at the settings one five hundredth of a second at f 1.8 iso 1000 with the 50 millimeter 1.4 and Nikon D90. Okay, so he was able to get one five hundredth of a second at f 1.8 at a thousand ISO, and I'm sure the D90 does a little better than that um, in low light. So, hmm, first thing I want to do here is go brighter. So in that case, I'm going to go with my exposure, and that just opens everything up. Um, yeah, that, I mean, that opens it up quite a lot. I'm not a Phil Light fan, again, even though I use it sometimes in some of these videos that you've seen. Is this a person or is this... Who knows? I don't know what it is. Anyway, so that's what happens. See, that's dark. That's it, If this is in aperture priority, then it's probably reading this bright area here, which is throwing off the exposure. So I am going to brighten it up a little bit. Some, you know, sometimes... I feel like black and white. Yeah, sometimes I feel like black and white. All the time I feel like black and white. But this is not an easy picture. Um, because of a bunch of things, there's not a lot of light. It still looks nice and clean. It's an interesting color. It's a little magenta. No. It is. So we can take some of that magenta out. This is a tough one. I wonder what Greg's doing to this. He's probably adding gradation, and he's probably making, uh, he's probably adding uh, vignettes and all those really fun things that I never touch. A little bit of fill light just to throw in and just to bring up some other aspects of this photo. Um, huh. Let's see where we started. That's where we started. Very, uh, what's this, underexposed. And in this case, I went up, what, two stops? Stop in a and three-fourths to open it up a little bit and I think we have a much better image at this point than where we started it uh, I'll be interested to see how you guys tweak this because I'm having trouble with it I don't know if Greg is having trouble with it um, but I'd be very interested to see what you guys do with it so as always you can go to the form well go to the Fronos photo website and inside this post there is a link to the forum for a for this specific photo where you can download the raw file and then upload your edited JPEG and or edited exported JPEG file uh, along with your settings and it'll be interesting to see what you guys come up with and now that I'm looking at this black and white I think I've decided that I want to make it black and white uh, because there's not that much color in here Nah, black and white it is just that little taking my eye off of it for a little bit and then bringing it back I just think this is going to be a little better um, in the future let's critique it real quick there's not much you can do because I don't know what kind of limitations you had so I can't really be I can't be critical of the photo if I don't know the limitations that you had if you weren't allowed to move because uh, in this case I would try to focus on her eyes or his eyes whoever this is looking through whatever this device is so let's see what Greg came up with I went with the black and white. Be very curious to see what he came up with. And also curious what you guys come up with. Jared Polin, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. Greg Cazillo, froknowsphoto.com. I got a really neat image this week. Different. Completely, completely different. Um, it's not something we often get to see as a regular people that are not in the medical field so 
uh, you know, seeing all the, 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 the outfits and the gloves and the this and the that and the metal devices. Just a really cool image, just a different view. Uh, hopefully it's not someone that had a problem with something. Hopefully it's just a routine, something or other that need to be, uh, you know, issue that need to be fixed and nobody got hurt. So, anyway, um... As I always do, I like to look at the histogram. Histogram tells me a story of where the data is, where it needs to be pushed around and moved in order to get a, a better overall image. Um, first thing that we have a problem with is exposure here. Uh, we're probably two stops at least underexposed. As we can see when there's hardly any data here in this middle section that is highlighted. There's no data there. It's very, very flat. There's very little bit of information in there. So that's a problem. So when I do open it up to start to fix it, we get very noisy. And that's actually where a lot of people have problems with their photos. They say, oh man, my camera pictures are so noisy and they get all this, you know, they just look bad, all these weird colors. Well, if you have a proper exposure, you probably wouldn't have as, have that problem. So you're better off bumping your ISO up and then you'll end up with a better end result using a normal exposure. So I'm going to adjust my, keep my exposure probably somewhere in there because I want to see that data all the way across. But since we do have all of this noise, which actually isn't too awful bad and Lightroom could do a, probably do a pretty good job of getting rid of that which we might even try. Maybe we'll try that. Let's see how we do. Let's get down here to effects. I'm sorry. Let's get down here to detail. Is what we want. Detail. And let's try out some of our noise reduction. And now as you see, at 100%, yeah, it does a pretty good job. But the problem with it is, is that it does start to remove detail as it's doing that. All right. So oh, let's try and zoom in right there. All right. So I want to start try and keep some of that detail. So let's let's I would say be somewhere in there. Now our detail slider is definitely keeping some of that detail that I like to see. Probably somewhere in there, I believe. Now, contrast. Once again, contrast is something that's picky. Not bad. Not bad. Color. Color. Hmm. Let's see overall. Oops. Let's see overall again. Overall, not too bad. Let's go back. Oops. Actually, I want to go back to here. And then we're going to look at after let's zoom in and look again not bad not bad it's definitely gotten rid of a lot of that and I think it's improved it let's see what it looks like up in here yeah definitely improved um, obviously this is like a worst case scenario where you're really trying to save an image that was mistakenly underexposed Definitely want to try not to do that whole underexposure thing because it does ruin an image. So let's try something. This is looking pretty good, pretty acceptable, not bad. Not bad for being basically three stops underexposed. We did a little temperature change. Uh, let's see, how about a little bit of fill light maybe? Push it up even more. I know, I know, Jared hates the fill light. I get it. Uh, let's try a little more contrast, and we're going to go with seven on my blacks here. I think that's good. I think that is good. A little bit of clarity for a little more contrast. That's better. Now, that's good. I like it. Now the other way the disk image could be saved is if we would completely get rid of all of this, all of these changes here, and we'd make it black and white. Black and white gives us the grainy feel rather than the color noisy feel, and so that can actually make it a good image, and it won't be as big of a deal 
when we have this three stop underexposed issue. Uh, so this is a, a, a good way of of adjusting and fixing, but again, this is kind of worst case scenario. And if we had an image where we needed to see a lot more detail, then we'd have even more of a problem uh, because you know you're, you're almost better off trying to reshoot it at that point. All right, so not a bad image came out pretty well for being as underexposed as it was. Greg Cazillo, Fro knows photo.com. See ya. Here we are. Greg and I are back together to go over the edit that, well, he did an edit, I did an edit, same as every week, but this week, well, not this week. Greg, show him the new, well, don't show him the new microphone. Talk a little bit. Tell him you got a new microphone. Testing, testing. How does this microphone sound? Hopefully it's a lot better. That's right. He has a, he now has his own Blue Yeti, which came in the mail, the holiday present. And, uh, yeah. So, Greg, I edited, edited, did, did, did this picture. Who, what do we say? Alan French took this picture. Um, uh, that sounds right. Yeah. Well, actually, let me go back to develop for a second so I can see. Well, we don't need to see where it was taken. We already just did that video. How quickly we forget. So anyway, I did it in black and white. You did it in color. And I did do a little bit of color to see what I thought of it. And I just felt that it would possibly look better in black and white. Uh, I don't dislike either. You know, I don't dislike the color at all. I think the color comes out very nice in the one that you did. Um, I, I think they work both pretty well. Yeah, I think the key to mine was the additional uh, detail and noise reduction. Uh, since the image was, was shot like two stops under, as I mentioned in my video, there was definitely a lot of detail loss and a lot of really underexposed and real noisy Yeah, uh, when I opened it up. As you, I'm sure you saw in uh, in the black and white. So you used a lot. Of, you used the built-in noise reduction as, in Lightroom. Yes, I did. Yeah, I try not. I don't. I mean, I personally don't touch the noise reduction very often myself. But I know sometimes in certain images when you have to bring it back so far that you do that. But what do you know? What the uh, side effects of that are? Uh, you lose some detail. Yeah, and it's sometimes I I don't like losing detail, but. Really, there's not much for us to fight about this week. Unless <laughs> not a whole lot. You, unless, you think, a whole lot. unless you think the black and white is totally off base. Uh, no, because I actually thought about going black and white on this image because of the noise factor. Yep. yep. And um, I think it's smoothed out just enough, and actually the corrections are so good in Lightroom that it smoothed it out just enough that it wasn't really an issue to me because... I just like how those blues popped and seeing that color and it just makes it really, really feel like an operating room and, you know, it gives you that idea. So I, I just felt the color was better for me. Well, my, my concern with the color and making it poppy or punchy was that that may not be representative of the operating room, you know? I mean, we don't know because we weren't there, but I, I, mm. I find it hard to believe that it would be that saturated or vibrant you know what i mean that's why i went with black and white because i thought it would be more reminiscent of what the scene actually looked like very true well it was shot with a 51 4 and actually the iso was only set to a thousand yeah but ah i see why there was such an issue his exposure bias was set to minus one and a third ev oh which there's really no reason to touch that stuff yeah, and he's shooting a D90 with a 51.4, um, you know, shooting a one five hundredth of a second at, at 1.8. You know, he just the settings to me just seem way off. And obviously, we're not really talking uh, Lightroom or or editing as much as we are the proper initial exposure. Yeah, so but that's where it starts. So there's no really, I I don't ever touch exposure compensation. I just tweak my my exposure right yeah 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 he was you and and what makes it even worse is he was shooting on manual does it still affect the exposure that? Bias. does the uh the, the does that still get affected in man when you're shooting in manual well it changes your meter when right. you change your meter then you don't know that you're shooting a stop and a third under right yeah that's something that I guess part of the reason I don't do it, and which I found very easy to change in the Canon by accident by turning that dial in the back when I've been using them, 
Um, I don't do it because sometimes you forget and you don't want to. You don't really need to change it in my mind. Yeah, when you're shooting aperture priority, shutter priority, sometimes yeah, that that's really what it's for. Not on manual because it just throws off your meter and you know you're relying on your meter to get a good exposure. You can't do that. Cannot do that at all when you're doing it on manual. Right. Got to remember to reset that. Yeah, and and just wrapping this up. This is a good image that we were, you know, this is one of those images that we look for to edit. It's it gives us the ability to do a bunch of different things and and try to, you know, utilize what the raw file actually gives you to try to bring the image to a place where we think it would work. Yeah, I think it's a great image that we were able to save it. Glad we were able to save it and make it look good uh kind of as a worst case scenario. Yep. So, as always, this photo, the raw file, will be up in the forum. So read the post, click the link, takes you right to the forum where you will have the link to the zip, yeah, zip file, which will have the raw file for you to do your edit and then upload back into the forum. And you can send your raw files for us to edit when we get to them to froknosephoto at gmail.com. Hey, one else? thing I forgot, Jared. Yeah, yeah one thing I forgot. Uh, please, everybody in the forums, make sure that you, if you're uploading a photo directly to uh, to the server, right to the end of the forums, and not using a Flickr or another upload service, make sure you read the instructions on how to upload those photos, because there's been tons and tons of them where people aren't doing it correctly. So read the instructions, RTFM, go through it, and I guarantee you that it'll work as long as you read them and do it all properly. Yep, so do that. And that's all we have for today. Till next week, Jared Poland, fro knows photo.com. See ya, Greg. See ya.